just in there. And then the blue is residential. <clears throat> the landscaping is, 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 is pretty in, in important to, to this, particularly the area in here. And you can see the various aspects of landscaping that are proposed. Of particular importance, member, members, I'll draw your attention to condition six, and specifically the, the last sentence of the first paragraph there, which talks about the reserve matters needing to submit landscaping, or including landscaping. And then that final sentence says, details of how the development will enhance biodiversity to include green roof habitat, a native species planting, and integrated bird nest bricks. So they'll all be part of that landscaping uh, submission. Then we get on to the access parameters. And this is a plan that you will be approving. So as I said, you've got that access, the vehicular access and egress onto Road Street. And then you have these pedestrian accesses to the, uh, the, the uh, community uses, the co-working spaces in there, and then the residential accesses uh, in there. Then we get onto the height parameter plan. And again, as I've said to you, um, scale is something that you are, need to consider as part of this application. And this starts to set out the, uh, the heights. Further clarification of the heights is set out on page 36 of your, rep of your report. So block A, which is that front one there, is proposed mixed height building front in the high street, rising in height as it steps back from uh, um, towards the existing multi-story car park. Um, the building to measure 22.55 meters at the parapet front in the high street with the upper floor step back to approximately 30.48 meters at the ridge height. Uh, and then a section of the building to the rear would measure approximately 31.25 meters. So we've got the ground floor plus seven stories is, what, is, is what's shown. Block B, which is this block here, um, would be part six to nine stories. Um, and that shows the lower section of that to be at 28 meters and the higher section to be about approximately 36.7 metres to the top of the parapet. Um, and that was uh, reduced from what was originally submitted. And then block C in here, which is for the retention of the existing multi-storey, um, has a mixed height. So the parameters show the building to be approximately 32.8 metres to approximately 35.8 metres to the top of the parapet. And again, this has been amended during the lifetime of the application. So the indicative floor plan shows that block C would equate to four storeys of residential <coughs> above the multi-storey car park. And the plans that you'll see here, although they're indicative, indicate around 163 flats. So below what their, their application is for, which is up to 175 units. So just going through the, uh, the, the indicative floor plans. Indicative floor plans show a basement area here, which provides for storage for each of the flats, as well as cycle storage um, for them. And then going up, we've got the, um, the, existing, uh, no, sorry, the uh, existing car park and residential um, above block A and within block B, and then above the car parking area uh, in, in here. In addition to this, we, um, we consider that because of the, the car parking will be at 50% of the residential, yes, it is a town centre site, it is a sustainable site, it is a site we want to see come forward, um, but we would be looking for an additional condition which relates to the travel plan um, which has been put forward by the applicants and possibly could include the, uh, the use of um, uh, a car club either within the site or facilitating uh, 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 or linking into the car club on a site possibly like the Chatham Waterfront um, just down the road. We've got the indicative fourth plan, fifth plan, sixth floor, seventh floor, and the eighth floor there. The 3D modeling showing how that we get those step backs, as I said, from the high street here We've got that um, landscaped amenity area here, those step backs and those increases in heights are step backs here as well. And Duncan will explain a little bit later how the scheme is amended and reduced 
and inc in included these step backs from that scheme um, that was originally submitted. So hopefully this will also help members because the yellow gives an indication of the heights that we are or, or that you will be approving if you allow this application uh, uh, today. So they're the maximum heights, the scale aspect that you are that you're asking for. So members, you considered the application at the last planning committee meeting. You deferred it, and the reasons you deferred it is because you are. Uh, you had a slight nervousness and you wanted some clarification on this. The nervousness related to the fact that this is an outline application um, and you know, you, you agreed the principles of, a principle of the site, you know that the site needs to be redeveloped and you were happy with that. But you also know that this is a big scheme and you wanted some comfort in relation to what could be delivered in terms of design, bulk massing, external appearance. Um, although recognising that this is an outline application. Now, Duncan will talk through the work that we've done so far, um, but he'll also mention in terms of that this is part of the journey on this site. An outline application will take us so far. They will then need to do a reserve matters uh, application. Um, very much, members, that will need to come back to this committee. Whatever the recommendation, it will need to come back to this, this committee. I think that's important. This is a very important site within Chatham, uh, Chatham Centre. Um, but um, the, uh, as I said, the journey that Duncan will talk about is the fact that we know of critical importance in the determination of this application is what it's going to look like at the end of the, end of the day. We feel that they've done enough within so far to get an outline approval, but then those reserve matters will need to be very, very carefully considered. So if I can pass on to uh, Duncan at this point. Thank you, Dave. Um, what might appear a slightly abstract image here uh, is you probably recognize as the, as the model uh, of Chatham. And because it's always a challenge, I know, for yourselves and for us it's in, through the pre-app pre processes to really understand what, um, what, uh, what's being presented and how it presents itself in the context. Uh, the image you're seeing here is of the Chatham model and the blue, those, all those rather strange blue shapes are the strategic views. It's the way we test, in fact, the models that we've been presented with um, by the applicant. Um, it, uh, uh, we've had a very good pre-app dialogue with this, uh, with this team and um, uh, I'm glad to say they've, uh, through, uh, through the testing and dialogue we've, been, we've had, they were willing to amend the scheme uh, in line with our, um, our, our uh, points and recommendations. Uh, do you want to move on to another one, Dave? Um, we're able to zoom in this, into this quite closely, and you can see the scheme in the middle there, so sitting below what appears this rather blue cloud. Um, their previous scheme actually penetrated through these planes, and what that could indicate to us, and did indicate and was borne out later by their strategic views themselves, was the fact that um, uh, there it had impacts the first scheme was providing impacts upon the uh, upon the views historic England also picked that up and following these amendments and the process we've been through here historic England have been feeling far more comfortable about it which they've articulated and we uh, felt that uh, we now have a scheme that is not going to uh, exert ex excessive harm upon the town and the views and we feel confident that uh, with the reserve matters application coming in that we're able to that we're able to get the level of detail into this which um which can make it work well for the town given of course where uh, where uh, wherever w the way we're trying to progress so uh, if you think that's enough for the moment dave i can come back thank you duncan um so just going through building on what duncan's saying so these are the changes during the life of the application using the, the, the 3D model. So that was a scheme as originally submitted. And this is a scheme that you're being asked to consider tonight. So you can see the reduction in height of here. You've got that setback in here, a little bit of a setback in, in, in here as well. Change to this, and as well as we get these, these, these setbacks here. And then, as Councillor Hackwell pointed out at the last meeting, what we needed to do is show this originally submitted in the current, utilizing the same color, um, so that members can compare apples with apples. So that's the scheme as originally submitted. 
and this is the, uh, the, the current proposal. So I'm going to go through a few viewpoints. That's Richard Street. This is from the Mount Car Park. So that's the scheme as originally submitted. This is the scheme as amended. And that's very important because it shows how that ridge line, that important ridge line of the Great Lines, is protected through that. Similarly with this one, that's originally submitted. We were concerned there about the height here going above the ridge line. You can see how the amended scheme reduced that and that, that impact in terms of those important views of the Great Lines. And then similarly here, as originally submitted, um, and now you can't see it from that view, as originally submitted, now you can see how it's been uh, significantly reduced within the current proposal. Originally submitted, views from the Great Lines, and then showing the, the current proposal, how it sits very far more comfortably within the, um, the character of, the, of, of Chatham. And Duncan, do you want to talk to this? Yes, thanks, Dave. Um, I thought it was worth actually just um, uh, because we've seen some views there uh, and the massing sitting within photographs, in, and uh, and the photographs very much b have been bearing out what we've been seeing in the model and vice versa. We do have to challenge applicants, of, uh, and you, you uh, which you'll be aware of, and the model allows us to uh, to do that in a rigorous way. If you could move on to the other image here, Dave. Um, I was advised that I think um, uh, chairman and members were keen to see another an image from this direction. This is actually from our model, as opposed to a photograph. We've put this. We've uh, this is us demonstrating this. But this is the view from Chatham Hill, coming down Chatham Hill. Um, we felt we felt, always felt that it was. We had this dialogue with the applicants at the time that it was important to understand this one, and you can see the castle and cathedral in the background, the fact that it does not obscure the view of that, and the fact that it sits within the fabric now that it's, uh, it's lower than it was, and so it sits more comfortably within the fabric. And that's, um, so I understand you were keen to see that view, or understand it at least, and so we provided that. Duncan, thank you very much. Members, the final thing I want to point out is in relation to section 106. Um, you'll see there that uh, a uh, significant amount of sums um, uh, are provided. The first one, which is for the green space, the public realm, those bigger open spaces uh, within, uh, within, within Chatham, which are so important for these prospective residents that they've got somewhere that they can, they can go to. The second one there for community infrastructure also includes a reference to public realm. But though that, that, if it goes to that, that's for those smaller improvements. So it could be, for instance, something to do with uh, enhancing the high street itself, maybe doing something with the existing trees, which have got too large in the, in the high street, but it's a, small, it's a smaller uh, element. And then the third bit there, which is towards health improvements to primary care, that is to delivering, ideally, that healthy living centre uh, uh, within the Pentagon. And Chairman, subject to uh, everything that we've, um, we've discussed and the conditions in Section 106 laid out, plus the additional travel plan condition, we're recommending approval. Thank you. Thank you. I think members will agree that the, the presentation was useful to clarify a lot of issues that we were concerned about. And also uh, Duncan coming this evening to uh, speak a little bit more about the process. Right, I have Councillor Tranter, Councillor Curry. Um, thank you, Chair. And um, thanks to um, officers and indeed the applicants for the additional information and clarification um, which is in very helpful indeed. Um, the, the, I'm sure other colleagues will, will have a, quite a few detailed questions. Um, for me, I just wanted to make, uh, I always worry with these outline applications that, and I know others feel this, that we agree to something and then we feel so constrained or it's difficult when the detailed application comes through say well you, you have to go along with this now because a b c and you've already agreed the outline and you can't you know so i will certainly be looking for a lot of um uh, if you like uh, cl uh, clarification regarding the details materials and and so on exactly how we manage that um I think that part of Chatham and the High Street has a huge amount of potential. I know some people will look at it you know, with some sadness in some way, but if you look deep at some of the other buildings, so the way that fits in, and I did raise this at the presentation with um, the applicants, 
the way that fits in is incredibly important. I know we're not agreeing that this evening, but I would really be looking for assurances that we are not in any way by agreeing this, e this evening, um, making it more difficult for ourselves when we look at the detailed application at some point in the future. I think that's really, uh, you know, I, I, I know you will give that assurance, but I wanted to say it out loud and, and I needed that. The other thing is on pages 35 and 36, which is, talks about the proposal, can you just give me some clarification regarding, for example, it says that a certain amount of square meters approximately will be, for example, creative art studios. Now, does that mean that it has to be for creative art studios or could it instead be for educational purposes or for something else? What's the wriggle room within those words in legal planning terms so that when this comes back at some point in the future, we're not feeling, well, hang on a minute, I thought we had agreed to art studios and now there's something else in front of us. Um, you know, so uh, in terms of the, the proposal on pages 35 and 36, how firm is that? And are, are we saying they will be creative art studios or just, you know, um, and that's what's been agreed and it can't go, in, you know, and the same, I suppose you could say about, you know, the, um, the office space and so on and so forth, you know, it, 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 how, flexible is that and how much wriggle room is there for um, the uh, applicants to come back at a later stage and change all of that and suddenly say well actually we want more flats we want less of this and it's going to be something very different from what we've agreed this evening in the minds of the committee thank you <clears throat> chairman thank you very much um, really good points and very important points that Councillor Tranter makes there because this is a very, very important site. Um, we all want to see it developed, but it's got to be developed in a very high quality uh, way. Um, otherwise we failed Chatham and we failed the people of, uh, of Chatham. And as um, I was trying to say uh, earlier, the approval of the outline is, is just, we're sort of midway in the process uh, uh, here. We feel that um, with the work that we've done with them to um, agree in the access, but also more importantly agreeing the scale and the height um, that we've got to an acceptable level in relation to an, an outline application. There is an awful lot more work to be done in relation to the reserve matters. Uh, and as Councillor Tranter quite rightly says, the attention here to the detail, um, including materials, will make this. Um, and that's why I was saying, one, you know, Duncan is, 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 is all over this and is working very closely with, with them. And if they were to sell it on to someone else, we'll be working very closely with um, whoever takes forward the, 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 the site. Um, we will not be accepting second rate on this. But the other thing on that, that's why, and, and, and Chairman, um, this is a point that you, you made to me, was it's, it's important that the reserve matters come back to this planning committee. So this planning committee are satisfied with the quality of the of, of, of this scheme. And if you're not satisfied with it, then you should be refusing at re refusing it at that reserve matter stage. The second, uh, second point relates to those, those indicative ground floor uses. Um, and what I would say there, Councillor, Councillor Tranter, is uh, we are looking at um, the, the uh, class F1 and class E in terms of these uses here. And we see that as pretty critical uh, to the scheme. We don't see residential in these areas. The residential will be above here and within these areas here and above this area there. And that's very much in terms of fitting in with what we're trying to create here, that creative center, that um, employment uh, uh, aspects. Um, and that will be something that we will be of, of, of very much, very, of, of great concern um, uh, to, to us. Now, they've shown an indicative layout like that. That's an indicative layout. Um, depending on who comes forward, it could be a smaller units, it could be larger units in, in, in there, it could be fewer. It, it, that is something that will come forward in the, on the reserve matters. But absolutely, we will be pushing for um, non-residential on the ground floor of these areas here. Um, and we will not be supporting something which includes residential on the ground floor, other than th th those cores, the eye, the stairs, the lifts going to those upper floors. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. From briefly, uh, I mean, personally, for example, if it came back and there was an educational use, I'm not saying there would be a problem with it, 
um, because we might be happy with that. It might be a great use for the building. What I'm trying to make sure is that there's no substantial change from the film, but thank you very much for clarifying. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Dave, and thank you for the presentations and, and, and the work that's gone into this. Um, I've got a number of points to make um, and, uh, in relation to things like conditions, the fact that there's no affordable and things like that. But I've got some substantive points to make first, if I may, Chair, and then depending on how the debate goes, may I come back in and make some more finer points, if, if that's all right with you. Thank you very much. Um, Basically, obviously the principle of development and the idea of having a mixed use here in terms of retail and employment and, and accommodation and, and, and residential, that's, that's absolutely fine. However, I've got some problems with the heart of what's going on here. Um, the, the proposed buildings and the role of the town centre master plan seem to be in conflict here. Um, and that was published in 2019. Um, as the report on page 43 says, the Chatham Town Master Centre Master Plan states, Chatham is, a, is in relative terms a low-rise town and should broadly remain so if the historic landform and morphological context is to be understood and enjoyed by future generations. And we've established that point about this development being hugely important, not just for now, but for the next probably 100 years, I suspect, of generations of Chatham residents are going to be here looking at it, living in it, and, and, and moving past it, and it's part of, of their whole lives, if you like, so getting it right. And I think the Chatham uh, Centre Master Plan recognises that. And the report, the, the, the officer's report now goes on to say, the proposed development site is assessed in the Building Heights Policy document as the Brook Residential Quarter as an area that can accommodate modest height townscape buildings. Now I've looked at in, in very carefully at the town centre master plan and as far as I can work out, Trafalgar Centre, and it clearly marks it on the map, is actually in the Chatham Creative Hub rather than the residential quarter. So I'm confused as to why the officer's report says one thing and the master plan appears to say something different. And that's important because the the sort of guidance that the master plan provides on height is different. Um, so it says in, in the Chatham Creative Hub, clearly states in the town centre master plan, most buildings are already existing two to four storeys on average. And if we're looking at a low rise Chatham town centre and the Creative Hub is saying two to four storeys, suddenly we're doubling that and that concerns me. Um, but I may be mis misreading the documents, so some guidance there I'd appreciate at some point. I would argue that the scale of this development is contrary to the principles of the vision and context of the master plan, which asks us to respect issues around scale and height. Suddenly, we're doubling the height. We're not really, I don't feel the respect is there that the, uh, the report is asking for. And we also find in the master plan on page 89 of the master plan that within the neighboring central quarter, literally about a minute's walk up the road from here um, towards the sort of west, uh, if you like, um, there's the Debenhams building. And it specifically refers, the primary landmark building is Debenhams, height and massing. This building is one of Chatham's main anchor buildings. And we're not doing anything with that at the moment. That's not coming first in terms of our development of the principles and the, how the high street is going to look. It's behind the, t behind the time. This is coming first. And I feel that this building is actually setting a lot of the principles that actually should be set by Debenhams. So I'm really concerned about why this has come forward so quickly and now when actually, in terms of master planning, Debenhams is more important and is recognized so in the town center master plan. And the master plan goes on to say, the council advocates a place-based approach to new development, which is thoroughly evidenced by an in-depth understanding of the historic townscape of Chatham. The council expects that all new development in Chatham would be tested against the strategic views in the council's tall building strategy, as well as additional short and medium townscape views to ensure that new development is sympathetic to the urban qualities of the town and emergent place. Now, the town sent that, that tall building strategy is 2006, as far as I understand. It's a very old strategy. And actually, um, the report that the Town Centre Plan goes on to state, new developments therefore must be based on a thorough analysis of the urban context, townscape, and analysis and views, combined with well-devised understanding of history and place. And it goes, the Town Centre strategy actually says that a new 
building height policy is being developed. In 2019, it says it would be doing that, and we've not seen that. So there's a 2006 policy which we're working with, but actually there's a new one emerging that will be better and more relevant because it's 2019 or afterwards, and we don't have that to work with because it's not there, and yet we're going to allow a tall building tall buildings, plural, to come in. So I think there's a conflict there between the development of policy, the town centre management plan itself, and all, the, all that goes with that, that, sort of the wording that I've just given you, and the fact that this has come forward before Debenhams. So we've got some problems there. We also know from the report that the council is still uncomfortable, and we've heard the analysis from, from Duncan, about the TVI, the Townscape Visual Impact Assessment. So there's still issues around that. We're not quite comfortable. And we have to remember that landscape impacts are also those of what people see close up in the town and not just what's beyond and over the top of the town, which is what we've been looking at just now. Um, so on the issue of the building heights, there's some problems. The new development adjacent to existing residential areas and stuff like that is, is not supposed to be as tall. And in this case, residential areas are the nearby Chatham waterfront and Dacian brook developments. Now, those are going to be tall, and we accept that. We understand that it's happening as we speak. But here, we're in the creative hub, and that's a different part of the, of the townscape, if you like. So I feel that this application has been submitted and determined too early, if you like. And prior to commencement works on the Chatham Town Centre design code itself. We don't have the design code in place. Another policy which is not quite there, and yet this is coming forward. So, in general, I feel I cannot support this application at the moment. The principle, fine. The idea that we will have this mixed-use development there, but at the moment, I feel that the policy is, is sort of lagging behind the practice in this instance. So I feel that at the moment, we need to sort of take a breath, pause, say no to this application at the moment, look at the Debenham site, get our policies on building height and on the, um, the town centre design code in place, and then we'll feel more confident that we're doing the right thing for the next several generations of Chatham's residents. So thank you for, for listening to me, Chair, and uh, obviously if I can come back in, depending on how the debate goes, I'd be grateful. Thank you. Chairman, thank you very much. Really good points that Councillor Curry makes, and I understand totally that, that nervousness. Um, and, and the ideal, the ideal, um, you, you've referred to the master plan, um, you've referred to a number of other documents there, and the design coding work that's coming forward. And in an ideal world, yes, we would want to see building heights policy first, we would want to see the design codes first. Um, that's an ideal world. Um, but the application is in front of you now. You've either got to approve it or you've got to refuse it. And if you refuse it, prematurity is not a ground of refusal. You've got to explain what the harm is. Now, I'm going to ask Duncan to come in a, a minute because he's done so much work in terms of the assessment of this, this scheme. Chatham Centre is in a bowl. It's in a bowl, and it's relatively low-lying, and it's surrounded by this, the, um, the great lines and the forts, and that's part of the character of, of that, and that's really, really important part of the character. And that, that was picked up in the, in, 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 in the master plan. Um, and what the master plan says is, as Councillor Curry quite rightly quotes, it gives some indications as to what may be appropriate heights. That does not mean to say that you can't go higher what it's saying is if you do go higher, you need to very carefully consider the impact of that. And that's exactly what Duncan and my team have been doing. So Duncan, if you're okay, I'll pass over to you at this point in time. Yeah, yeah thank you, um, uh, Dave, uh, Chairman, and Councillor Curry. Nice to, nice to uh, try and answer some of those points. I think the thing that's uh, perhaps useful is also to understand it builds a little bit on the images I was showing you earlier, which is the, the process that's been gone through. Uh, um, and you're absolutely right. It, it, it is critical we get these things right, isn't it? And Chatham, as Dave mentions, is in a bowl. And it means we do have not just strategic views, but we have other views which are being picked up as part of, um, as part of the assessment. Uh, my colleagues have been looking at that through the, um, through the views and TVIA process. 
The really interesting thing in many ways about this site and where it's located is that um, it's not just that it's uh, just it, it sits back from the high street, of course. So, uh, but it actually sits on an important cross route as well, which we c will be able to enjoy if this scheme comes out, moves ahead, uh, and uh, because. Uh, one of the critical things that is that people come out of the town from higher levels on routes into the town, and this is this is on one of those routes. So, um, so improving it is obviously an, an important thing uh, to do. What's really interesting is we look quite carefully at the height relative to that route for that very reason, because realizing that people would be on that route and in, and in and enjoying that uh, or not, depending on how it was, and in the testing. Uh, uh, we didn't feel that it was, and neither did um, Historic England, uh, interestingly enough, feel that it was something which, uh, which meant it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be possible. Uh, it is a challenge, I know, and I think we all feel it, don't we? It is a challenge when we have these schemes coming forward ahead of documents. As Dave says, it's in the ideal world, of course, we would have all those things in place. Uh, and I guess that we are relying on our testing, on our judgment, and on the fact that we have uh, a scheme here that we can uh, tune through the um, uh, uh, reserve matters process um, in order to get to where we need to get to. Um, if it was on exactly, if, if the height was in a different position, and, was, and the, the high bit was clearly on the high street or was in, was, wasn't set back, that would be much more challenging. Uh, fortunately, because the height is where it is, and they've been working on the heights coming down to the high street, it helps. The other thing that probably is worth men picking up is just your point about, which is absolutely right, Councillor Curry, about the, um, creative, the creative issues and the creative, for want of a better term, quarter, which is, I think it's described in the document. It's for that reason that the level of conversations happen between the applicant, ourselves, and... Um, uh, and the um, the creative uh, organisation there. Of course, we're hoping that's going to grow. And one of the challenges of that is to, is that in order to get it to grow, not only do, do you need space at the ground floor level and where those can take, but you also need people. You need it to be occupied, and we need people there. Um, what we've been feeling with this is that the combination of the space provided and the residential, greater residential uh, use and therefore more people around could significantly enhance that. And that, as, so as a catalyst, it, uh, it actually, uh, um, it, it serves a number of purposes. And, I, uh, and, and, and so there has been quite a lot of focus on that within the pre-app, within the pre-app discussions. Um, I can add, uh, add other things on specific points if you need it, but... Um, but, uh, but there's been a considerable amount of process on that. If I might, Chair, just come back on a, on a couple of points. Is that just very quickly, I was confused about why the report was saying it was in Brook development area, for residential area, and yet it's not. It's, uh, in the master plan, it's in the creative area, which, which is correct on that one. And obviously, your point about people and space, I mean, um, that's, that principle is there regardless. Even if we said no to this tonight, we'd still have that going forward. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Goldvin. Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, thank you, Dave and Duncan, for a very informative presentation. Um, afraid I've just had a frightening thought a few minutes ago that I've actually been familiar with this site for over 60 years. I remember being dragged around it as a child because um, before it was sort of Trafalgar Centre, it was Chatham's first supermarket, which I think was called Fine Fair. But yeah, um, so it's been an integral part of Chatham for a long, long time. Unfortunately, it, it, it's been derelict for many years. I mean, even when it was Trafalgar Centre, it wasn't really a, a satisfactory uh, presence in the town centre. It was a rabbit warren, and many people considered it to be a, a fire risk. Um, so it's been a site that's been crying out um, for development for a long, long time. And I'm pleased with what I've heard tonight because although I did go to one, uh, I think 
at least one of the um, pre-planning presentations, and it's it's good to see how officers have negotiated. I think a much better scheme. Height is a fa important factor, though I, I, I'm not so precious about it probably as others. But I certainly get that those views of the lines and through to to Rochester are very important to us in Medway. Those those views are what make Medway what it is. And, you know, and being able to see that green escarpment of the lines makes a considerable uh, contribution to uh, making Chatham um, a, a pleasant place. So I, I think officers and the developer have done a good job here in, in, in getting to this stage. But as Dave said, it's, it's only a, we're only part way there. What is crucial to follow, I, I think, is the materiality, because that, that is actually really crucial. You, you might have a good shape and form, but what, what you actually build it out of also makes a huge contribution to how it will, will, will fit into the, uh, the landscape. And I think the reassurance that this will come back to, uh, uh, to committee in the future for those sort of details to be looked at, I, I think is very, very important here because this is such a prominent site. But what I think is really good, and I think we mustn't um, lose sight of that, this is probably the first major private sector development that has come into Chatham for a long, long time. I'm delighted that we've led the way and I played a very, very small part in that um, with MDC. But because we've invested in Chatham, we've shown we're willing to invest in Chatham as a council, I, th I think that's acted as a catalyst now. And, and this is not the only large-scale planning application that will be coming in uh, to this committee um, for, for uh, development in Chatham, which is, is great to see. And I, I think this is a real um, shot in the arm for, for Chatham. It's a vote of confidence, and I think Whilst we mustn't fall over backwards in any way and, and say, well, well it, it's, you know, because it's a great um, investment in Chatham that we've got to agree with it, we patently haven't because officers have done a huge amount of work on this to make sure that what we've um, got to us tonight is acceptable in principle, because it's the principle we're talking about, isn't it? And we've also established that that detail will, will come forward to committee. So on that side, I'm very good. Just to um, touch on the um, section 106 is, regrettably, I think you've got to accept that when, when you're talking about inner city regeneration, these are difficult sites. And whilst I think it's good that Medway generally sticks to 25% affordable, and heaven knows we, we, we need as much affordable accommodation we get and probably under the present financial circumstance of the country, we will probably be needing um, uh, more in the future. But inner city developments like this are a completely different ball game f from greenfield sites, and you know we will we will not be able to often get as as much back out of them in that 106 terms as we were used to. Having said that, the the sums that have been negotiated for the, the um, environmental improvements in the area I, I think are good and I, I'm pleased it's it's done in a way that we can uh, use it to enhance not just new um, not only to provide new stuff but also to enhance what we've got uh, I mean one of the things I think it would really help Chatham is to have more tree planting within the high street there's a lot a, a lot of evidence now that having um, tree cover within urban areas uh, reduces the temperature and heaven knows I think we you know, we've all seen over the last uh, two or three weeks how important that is. So if we can get some extra tree cover um, provided out of this um, in the town centre, improvements to the paving, uh, and I, th I think that will be really a huge improvement in, in, in enhancement in Chatham. And I think it's also going to be a huge benefit to the developers because it's going to make um, Chatham easier to sell. Um, you know, the, this is, Chatham is a good place. I'm, I'm absolutely certain it is a good place, but uh, unfortunately, a few other people and a, um, a few red top tabloids uh, unfortunately don't seem to see that. But overall, I, I think this is a fantastic development for Chatham. 
you know, it really is good. And I think, just Risha again, I, I think it's good that both the developer and our officers have worked well to get this um, uh, proposal for us this evening. And I, I will certainly be voting with it with great enthusiasm. Thank you. Councillor Hackwell. Thank you, Chair, and I'll try and be brief. Um, thank you very much for the updated presentation, and thank you for the developers for, for taking on board some of the questions that we asked at, at, at the presentation. I think the presentation was a very useful process for us to, to understand it. Um, thank you for changing the colour of the buildings. It, it, it made it a lot easier to understand. Uh, and I think, Duncan, thank you for the, the, the sight line thing was, was, was very important. You could actually see that we've reduced below the ridge, ridge line, and, it, it, and it's very good. Um, and I particularly liked the view down Chatham Hill, that we could still see the castle, the cathedral, and the horrible Mountbatten House. Um, but it, it does just seem to blend into the, to, to the surroundings in the bowl. So uh, it, it, it makes it a, a very good shot. Um, did we manage to get, find the exact height of Debenhams against the, the High Street front? Which was one of the questions that I asked at the presentation. Yeah, I know. I'm just doing it. Okay. So, so it's not that much bigger than, than the Debenhams building. But that's so set that's, back, isn't that's, it? That's the Debenhams and that's the, uh, the proposed yeah, yeah. scheme. Yeah, I understand. Well, I, I think that the, the work that's been done by the developers on the presentation, I, I, I will be supporting this tonight. Thank you. Councillor Potter. Yes, thank you, Chair. I think members were right to defer the application and, and, and get that uh, clarity about the decision that we were making and get those... Uh, reassurances uh, around the, the project uh, as a whole. Um, I will be supporting the application uh, tonight. I think what is presented, uh, and obviously we've got an abundance of information that's been presented to us, and what is presented to us I think works very well in that setting. A key regeneration project for that end of the high street. We're going to see more residential coming forward in that part of Chatham as, as we know our high streets are, are changing. It's actually great that we will have people living in that part of Chatham, bringing people into that part of Chatham and helping to sustain uh, the Chatham High Street area uh, as a whole. We, with, in terms of the, uh, the final design, I think they'd have to go a really, really long way to come up with something that's worse than what's there at the moment. Uh, in fact, you know, award-winningly bad, if you like, <laughs> to get something that's worse than what's there at the moment. Having said that, we've got the safeguard of the reserve matters application, and if we're not happy about it, we'll throw it out. I will be supporting this tonight. Thank you. Councillor Hubbard. Thank you. Um, on page 43, it's the last full paragraph which uh, uh, Councillor Curry has spoken to, and that's about the, the building height policy, 2006. I remember that, uh, was, that was adopted when I was not on the authority. I remember reading it and uh, sitting in the MP's office, which was immediately opposite, realising what it meant to um, the uh, former uh, Strood. A civic centre site and I was quite astonished but here we seem to be a little bit confused between 2006 and later plans as uh, Councillor Curry asked the question um, is it part of um, the Brook Residential Quarter or not because if the 2006 plan says it that it is but the master plan says the opposite that was the question that wasn't answered um, but I'm sure you'll be able to give an answer. The, the presentation um, tonight was excellent, as was the presentation given by the um, developer, but it didn't answer the questions that I felt should be answered, because they couldn't, because they're just talking about their development, and their development is in one location. It is about context, and, and where it sits within, um, the, not so the height so much as where it sits within the town centre. So, go back in time, we've had long discussions of master plans of the Brook and Chatham and obviously the Corporation Street, uh, Street in, in Rochester, which was varied because obviously they moved the railway uh, station, so we did have, a, we did have a, a different brief about the railway quarter that no longer had the railway in the end. But there were long discussions and, and, and in-depth debate about what was suitable and what was not suitable. Here, we are rushing into it 
to the fact that we haven't been able to get those preliminary necessary documents in place to see how this um, pans out. Yeah, the most key site is, is Debenhams, yeah. And I know that I mentioned this last time, but way back, um, um, back in, what's that, 90, 95-ish, when we'd, the Rochester Council was quite well advanced about talking about its plans for Chatham High Street. And we were going to have an anchor store on the car park behind what was then Alders. Um, we're going to have a covered way going into the um, Pentagon Centre. It was a fantastic idea. We're going to revive Chatham. And then somebody mentioned the word blue water. What was that? And I feel endless number of hours of debate wasted when we realised what it actually meant. Um, having been to the site visit, it was quite interesting. Um, overlooking the cliff down into what is now blue water. So we are making a decision about a site, key site, that has actually a front of policy documents we would like to have in place. That could, that's on heights policy, it's context. Um, and the other thing that's a major concern it, to me is the affordableness, and that's why I mentioned at the presentation, I know the, um, the, uh, the applicants have uh, provided a viability statement saying they can't afford to have affordable housing, and it's got one and two bedroom flats. However, this is yet another site in the town centre where we are building without affordability being a focus upon uh, the actual development. I'm not quite sure who we're serving, but it doesn't seem to be serving the people that we've been in the Medway Towers at the moment. You know, there are people that I work with who uh, had a go at me about um, a, a, a building um, elsewhere in Ch Chatham, what we were doing, building, and I said, you don't know the half of it was coming forward and don't expect any affordable housing. They were taken back. So affordable housing is key to me, but it's more than that. It's just the fact that we're making a decision about the site prior to some key decision-making about the, site, the area of that part of chat. When the master plan was done, it did not have this in. Um, so I can't, in all credence, give it support because it's too early. Chairman, thank you very much. Just want to come back. Councillor uh, Hubbard quite rightly has, uh, has said that I haven't answered a particular question and, uh, and, I, and I will do so uh, on that. So apologies for not responding to that before. Um, and it is confusing and I, and I get that totally, uh, Councillor Curry. But essentially we, the, there, are, there are two different descriptions of the, of, the, of the same area in two different documents. So the 2006 uh, document, the Building Heights Policy, refers to that, that area as the Brook Residential Quarter. Um, the master plan in 2019 refers to as the Creative Quarter, but it's the same building and the same, the, the, the same area, but they're, they're described differently in those two do documents. So there's, the report is, is, is correct, but I appreciate that it, it, it's, it, it may be a little bit confusing. And uh, I, the other point, so I just wanted to say, uh, uh, Chairman was, and I, Councillor Hubbard has picked up on the, on, on, on the, on the affordable housing um, uh, point. Um, we had that independently assessed. Get totally the affordable housing uh, issue. And definitely in an ideal world, we would deliver that. And, but one of the things that we are recognising through the work that we're doing on the, on the local plan is that brownfield sites are not as viable as greenfield. It's an obvious statement, I know, apologies, members. Um, and we need to address the, then in the future that um, maybe we look at, we have a section 106 document which gets a reduced contribution on those brownfield sites, but the greenfield sites, they pay more, and that's work that we're doing through the, uh, through the local plan uh, at the moment. But in relation to this site, I had to make a bit of a call here. Um, viability was, was independently assessed by us. Um, with affordable housing, no section 106 and there was question marks even when with whether it was viable. Without affordable housing, we were able to get half a million pounds of worth of contributions, which I felt was very, very important in terms of Chatham Centre. I know Councillor Curry w w agrees with me in, in principle with, with what I'm about to say in terms of the need for that open space, that very important open space, um, as well as delivering healthy living centres and our other infrastructure. And it was a balanced decision that I had to go to in terms of the viability of the scheme. 
half a million pounds towards uh, that, that infrastructure or affordable housing. Um, and, and as I said, those question marks on whether if, with affordable housing in the scheme at all was, 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 was viable. Not, not perfect. Final thing, Chairman, I'm sorry for going on. It just goes back to my point. I totally understand, totally understand the nervousness of Councillor Hubbard and Councillor Curry, and, and indeed yourself at the last meeting, Chairman. Um, but, and we, were, we have that nervousness as well. In an ideal world, as Duncan said, we would have the, uh, the, 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 all these other documents in, 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 in place. But we're not in a perfect world. The application is in front of us now. We've got to determine it. Um, and I'm satisfied that my team, since December last year, have worked incredibly hard doing the necessary assessments to see whether this scheme of this height is acceptable in this location. Um, and yes, we feel it is. Um, there's still a lot more work to do when we come forward for reserve matters, if it's approved. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Harris. <clears throat> Some of what I was going to say, you, you, you just alluded to. Um, I understand. You want to come back, OK? Thank you very much, Chair. If I could come back on a couple of points, if, that, if I may. One in relation to the affordable accommodation, to start with. Um, Councillor Garvey made the clear point that this is exciting in the sense that it's the first private sector development in Chatham Town Centre for a long time. And actually, it doesn't give anything to the residents of Chatham Town Centre in terms of accommodation. The one and two bedroom apartments that are there are no good for families and they're too expensive for those on low incomes. So actually, the people in Chatham are not going to benefit in any shape or form from accommodation in this block. So that's a shame. And I'm sad about to hear that. I'd like to have seen some affordable accommodation in here. I'm sure we could have got the right mix with better um, provision and stuff like that. And I think also in terms of the use of the whole site, we're talking about um, the creative arts being there. Most of the people I know who work in the creative arts business don't earn a great deal of money. They're on low incomes, and this would have been ideal to work and live on the same site. Fantastic, but it's not happening. And I think also the other thing is in the creative hub aspect of it, in the Chatham Town Centre master plan, it talks about the creative area being there for students as well. And I don't see anything for students in this development at all. Maybe some, possibly some work within the creative area, but, but, but there's certainly no accommodation there for students either. So we're not, we're not really touching many of the buttons that our master plan, which was only published in 2019, it's not getting, we're not touching that at all. This is just building accommodation so the developers can build lots of flats in one place. And, it, and, and as Councillor Potter says, the design is to be something to be desired at the moment. And hopefully the, the next stage will we'll get some improvements and that'd be nice to see. So that's my point on the, accommodate, on the affordable accommodation. I still don't get the argument on the viability and why we can't build that in. And it would be nice to see the figures, if that's possible, on the viability calculations. It would be really nice if, if that's all right with the chair for us to have those. Um, I think on the terms of conditions and stuff like that, as there is money going into green spaces, could we please have town hall gardens mentioned specifically in the green space conditions? It's in a terrible condition. It really could do with some more funding. And this is, and it will obviously, the residency will obviously be using it along with the paddock and the waterfront. So it'd be nice to see that. And Councillor Garvey mentioned high street trees. It would be nice to see that as well. Brilliant idea. And, and we really do need some more, some more high street trees. And the ones there need replacing, to be honest. They're, they're not in good condition. So, so those are my points on conditions. Thank you very much, Chair. Councillor uh, Thank you, Chair. Very briefly, I think we should welcome this proposal. I think it's a huge vote of confidence in the local high street. Um, I'm sure the developers will come back with proposals which we consider at reserve matters at a later date. We include more trees, more flowers, which would be fantastic. We all want to see that. But I think we need to actually treat this what it is, which is a vote of confidence and, and make it be clear so that any, peers, any other private developer who wants to come in to help redevelop Chatham High Street is welcome in Medway. And we want to drive that traffic forward. So I'll be voting in support of this application. Thank you. Councillor Brown. Um, this is an application for housing. It's not a vote of confidence in anybody. What it is, it's developers bringing forward a, um, a project. And I do welcome the fact that it has been amended. And I think that the deferral was really useful to give us a bit more time. But let's not kid ourselves here. This is just another development. 
and we are either going to be against it or we're going to be for it, and it has to be on planning grounds, not whether it might you know, be a vote of confidence to the high street or not. I really do think that the reserve matters will give us a chance to improve the, the green spaces and maybe even improve some of the economic development benefits that come from this. I read the paragraph about the mixed um, commercial and, and, and non-housing bit of it, and I'm, I'm quite relaxed actually about that. What, what I would do is I would thank officers for working very hard on getting this to a stage where people like Historic England are more content with it than they were previously. While it's not going to be perfect, it is, and I have to agree with my colleague across lost the way, it is better than what's there at the moment, but that wouldn't be hard. Um, the one thing that I really think that we need to be more stringent about is actually affordable housing and having it in the centre where people can benefit from having it. We've got a climate emergency and we are building in town centres. Obviously you need to put as much um, help to people to be able to walk to places and if they can't walk, then they can use public transport should they be ever able to afford it. Um, I honestly think that we need to find a way to be more stringent on developments, and that includes our own about more affordable housing. I agree, and I heard what Councillor Goldwyn said. The likelihood is that we're going to need more of that, if not very soon, in the relatively near future. So I really am concerned about developments that come forward, they really are developments. They're not statements of, you know, whether people support us or not. These are developments based upon very hard thinking around money. But we should be in a position to look after the welfare of the people that we represent just as much as the place we represent. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have anybody else who's indicated. Um, I understand the concerns that some members are expressing. Um, I, I have concerns myself. But as Mr. Harris has just said, unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect world. It would be much better if we were being able to um, measure this against the heights policy, the, the development policies, whatever. Yes, that would be absolutely great. However, we do have a planning application in front of us and we are charged with having to determine that planning application. We can't put it away. Um, it meets the time scale and we, we need to determine it. What I think is crucial to this is that the details pursuant do come back to this committee. They do meet the aspirations which have been shown to us this evening, not only in the design but also in the materials. The other thing that I would say, I understand the concern about the affordable housing aspect, but the one thing I have learnt um, over the years is that if you want brownfield sites to be developed <clears throat> in preference to more greenfield sites, there is a price to pay for that. And that price normally comes out that they don't stack up for the affordable housing element. We could, as Mr. Harris has said, look in the longer term at upping the number on the greenfield sites, and reducing them on the brownfield sites, but that has to come in due course, and that's not with us this evening. So I'm going to move to the Vice Chairman. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Colleagues, if I could just comment first before I uh, move a proposal. I understand the points made about social housing. I understand particularly um, and, and respect the comments of Councillor Brown. On the other side of the coin, this proposal would bring in 
to the centre of Chatham. Residents, new residents quite possibly to Chatham, who will also bring an economic uplift to the high street. We desperately need some economic uplift to Chatham High Street. Several of us here have lived virtually all our lives in Medway and we've seen Chatham High Street and really to us an extent it has not needed an uplift so much as it needs it now and in the near future. I believe in the round this is not a perfect science in which we deal. In the round, I believe that this application, if approved with all the reserve matters, gives a significant boost to central Chatham, as other colleagues have said, and uh, I strongly support it on that basis. Turning, if I may, to a formal resolution, and I'm going to add uh, another section to this, uh, if I may, colleagues. So I move recommendation uh, subject to the Section 106 agreement. I would include on that, please, noting of members' comments in relation to potential expenditure areas on the public realm, the shared public realm, etc., trees, paving, and so on. Ask for that to be taken into account. And subject to B, which is the conditions 1 to 36, and the travel plan condition uh, to which uh, Mr. Harris rightly uh, drew our further attention. And as C, and I'll be advised if this is the wrong numerical order in which to put this, that all reserved matters will be subject to a further decision of this committee. I hope that that might encapsulate appropriately the proposal I wish to put forward now. Is that seconded? Thank you. Two councillors. Those in favour of that motion? Those to the contrary? That's the Sorry. Those to the contrary? That's two, Chairman. Are there any abstentions? Yes, but please could members return within five minutes because they tend to move away and I can't get them back again. Ma Madam Chairman. Thirteen.
Right, okay, that takes us then to the planning application for land off of the Lower Rainham Road. That's Mr Harris. Chairman, thank you very much. Members, the reason this application has come before you relates to one issue only. So this is the application site which got approval for Bellway to develop. There was a concern raised by members of the planning committee regarding this boundary here, the southern boundary with the Macklands Road estate. As an officer, we were recommending that there should be some permeability through that boundary so that residents of this estate could come through the, the, the new estate, get access to Berengrave Nature Reserve, access to the public footpaths that run this way, and also get uh, uh, a shorter route towards Riverside uh, uh, Country Park. Um, the, the, the ward councillor um, advised that he did not feel that that was um, a, a, a good idea, and he felt that there should be a boundary here which deterred uh, pedestrian access. Um, what he requested, and members of the planning committee agreed, was that when the boundary treatment um, uh, application came in for that boundary, we do a consultation exercise with the entire residents, all the residents in this Macklin Roads estate here, to see if they were wish to have a pedestrian access or not have a pedestrian access. The results of that survey are very clearly laid out in, 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 in your report. Um, is an overwhelming um, uh, support f for there to be no pedestrian access um, through through the site here. Um, personally, I think that was wrong, um, but that is the democratic process that that, that, that we work that we, we work in. The issue then is whether the proposed scheme members consider deters sufficiently that pedestrian access from the Macklands Road site in and through the, um, the, the, the proposed uh, site. So what the scheme shows is that there, so this is the Macklands Road uh, uh, site here. There are two cul-de-sacs coming through here. There are then some garages through here, so that's a hard boundary through that bit there. Then we have this person's house in here and a hard boundary through there. And then that is the garden of a house just here. So that's a hard boundary. So the areas where there is possible breakthrough for pedestrians are in these two cul-de-sac areas just here. What the, the Bellway proposal is, is to have a swale along through here. So that basically is a, is a, is a, is a dip. And in this area here and this area here, it's a probably a, a one meter fall from there down to the bottom of the swale. We then have a retaining wall through there of 850 mil in, in height, so just under, under a meter. Um, and then on the other side of that retaining wall, there's a knee rail fence of about a half a meter in height. So from an officer's point of view, this swale, which is to deal with surface water and so on, which has that one metre um, uh, uh, down, and then coming back up over a retaining wall, and then you have the knee rail fence, we feel is a sufficient deterrent to pedestrian access to, um, uh, to, to, to result in um, that, that not, not occurring, or, or occurring incredibly rarely. It's very it would be difficult for people to get from here by foot across to here. It would be a, a, a difficult manoeuvre. <clears throat> now, the, uh, the ward councillor, uh, Councillor Carr, has written in. Um, she uh, states, unfortunately, the proposed solution is not a solid se spe separation, as specifically stated in the consultation for local residents on the access and boundary treatment. A solid separation was overwhelming supported. Furthermore, I'm concerned the proposed boundary treatment may cause a feature which attracts groups to gather and may lead to antisocial behaviour because uh, issues in the two cul-de-sacs, Macklin's Way and Lambourne Place. Uh, I understand the concerns about visual amenity, and the point I was saying there is that um, 
you have that this connection, this visual, although you, there will be no pedestrian or vehicular access between the two, there'll be a visual connection between the two, and I think that's a good thing. Um, Councillor Carr, I respect greatly um, her, her, her view. Um, she, um, she says she understands the concerns about visual amenity, and therefore she would like to see those living in the cul-de-sacs who will have to look at whatever solution is put in place, consulted on whether the treatment is a wall or what's proposed here. So her, her, her thoughts are that there should be a, a more of a solid boundary along those. She then goes on to say, and I will read this out, because um, um, another issue is the boundary treatment on the western part of the site. What I would say, members, is that's not for consideration here. That wasn't what we were asked to consult upon, um, and it's not for consideration in this committee. Um, but what she goes on to say is... Um, the boundary treatment on the western part of the site, where a significant amount of the vegetation barrier has been removed, with the allotments to the northwest corner now quite exposed. Surely it would be visually better for the new development to have the allotments hidden by a standard 1.8 metre fence, which is also beneficial for the security of the allotments. Furthermore, there doesn't seem to be fencing proposed along the nature reserve boundary, which makes up the majority of the western boundary. I would have thought post and rail fencing would be used to discourage access other than through the path provided. Have the Riverside Country Park Ranger who manages this facility been consulted? And then she says, I understand members will likely not want to defer the application further, so I'm requesting members agree the condition subject to a consultation of residents um, in the two cul-de-sacs, Macklin's Way and Lambert Place, regarding whether they want this bank, sorry, this, this, this treatment as an alternative to the solid separation. The condition should also be subject to seeking the views of the Riverside Park Rangers and the allotment service regarding the fencing on the western boundary. Members, as I said, your consideration tonight is just in relation to the southern boundary. In relation to the western boundary, um, I note the comments by the, uh, the, the both ward councillors, um, and we will consider those comments when we are looking at the details of that western boundary. But for members tonight, what it relates to, what we're asking you to do is to consider the proposed boundary treatment along that southern boundary, which is was the subject of the consultation as required by this committee. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. I think it's only fair to say that that was submitted because Councillor Carr would have made those statements if she'd been able to be here <coughs> this evening. Councillor Tranter. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah. Um, you referred, I think, Councillor Carr's comment that we probably wouldn't want to defer this any further, and I certainly am in that camp. Um, and uh, I think we all want to listen to what residents think. That's an important part of what we do. Um, it's also, we, when we're looking at planning applications, we use that word permeability. Um, uh, you know, in other words, access to and from different places and through new developments and so on. And uh, this, uh, whilst I respect the views of those residents, to what extent are we also in, expected to consider the views of the residents that don't yet live in the new estate and what they might think? Um, because for me, they're just as important, or they will be, at some point in the future, and, and whether you know that matters too, and what they might see or not see, and how they feel about what we have agreed, as opposed, it feels a little bit like building a barrier around an estate, because uh, you know the people slightly resent the new development, which is quite normal, but to my mind, um, you know, I think we need to consider also in the whole. But, you know, I, I'm inclined to agree with, you know, we've gone through this process and agree with the recommendation uh, put in front of us this evening, but that's mainly because I'm concerned about the wishes of residents moving into the new estate as well. I'm kind of slightly with um, officers uh, personally um, that I'm surprised that we're in this place and having this discussion, but there we are. We are. Thank you. Councillor Curry. Thank you, Chair, and I'm almost totally agreeing with the comments that Councillor Tranter has just made in respect of why we're here and discussing it. Um, obviously, the gap was put there for the very reason that it's being used, is that it's an access 
to green spaces for members of the public who live in that area. And that was probably in the original planning application. That was the thinking about why it was put there. Um, so I'm curious as to why we now feel that we need to take it away. On the basis of a survey of residents in a particular locality, have we got any figures on how many people might use that gap or are using that gap at the moment to access Riverside Country Park and Bear and Grave? Have we asked their opinion as to whether they'd like to keep it? Because it's a public realm. I mean, that's, that's what the point of this is. And, and to have their access denied to them by residents who don't particularly like it doesn't sound very democratic, actually. And I'd like to know if there is any more figures on, 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 on how much more survey work was done. I, I, I worked it out. 245 letters were sent. Less than a third have come back. 81 is just under a third. So it's not a great deal of people who've complain, L less than a third who've got an issue with this, there may be, I don't know, 20 or 30 people a day going through that gap who would really like to keep it. Um, and as it's public, and then and I, I'm a little bit confused as to why we're here. I don't, can't see why, why this is an issue. In that point. I'd also like to know who's going to pay for the wall, if it's a wall, or who's going to pay for the boundary treatment, if it's boundary treatment of any sort. And also, let's not forget, putting my old countryside hat on, is that people create desire lines to get through to where they want to go. If we were to put planting here, they'd probably just come through anyway, if it's a really popular route to Riverside. And we may find a year from now that they're complaining that actually it's not there anymore and who's responsible for maintaining it. We've been in an argument over that. Actually, having an access that was in the original application, I'm just a little bit confused as to why we're here. So, I can't really support this. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Holcroft Scott. I'd like to echo what uh, Councillor Curry has said, and also, as a disabled woman, and we're in an ageing population, cut throughs are needed. If I'm correct, there isn't an access through there at this particular point in time. This was a field, and the Macklands estate was the last uh, development before you went into the field. <clears throat> so I think to say that you're closing up someone's access is not exactly quite right. The suggestion when the application for this development was considered was that whether or not there should be an access through, the committee at that time, to a degree, ducked the issue and decided that when it got further along the line, they would reconsult with the residents of Macklands as to whether or not, as the development was now taking form, did they want to change the view which they expressed at the time of the original application? Is that right? So we're not cutting off anybody's access. This is more an issue of what type of boundary is there going to be to this particular site? Yeah? Is that right? Ch Ch Chairman, Chairman, yes. I mean, essentially, essentially, two things. It's, it's firstly, from an officer point of view, we ideally wanted to see a pedestrian link through 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 here. Um, the residents of this estate, and I think Councillor put, trying to put it really, really well, um, people don't like development. They don't like development in the field next to them, um, and there there was a nervousness that people living in this er 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 estate would, if there's pedestrian access, come through their estate causing um, uh, potential problems on the way up towards uh, uh, Raynham and Station, and, 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 and station Road and the station and, 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 and so on. Um, I don't think that will, well, it might happen in the short term if there's pedestrian access, but in the longer term, there will be a much shorter route through, through here with that adjacent site here, which will be developed up to Station Road rather than what is quite a circuitous route through the Macklands Road estate. I think we saw it from officers as more an advantage to the existing residents that they can actually get something which they, they, they don't have easily at the moment. You're, you're right, Ms. Uh, uh, Councillor Chambers, in terms of there is, there used to be a, um, uh, a, a fence um, a, a along there as well, as well as planting which 
restricted access onto this, this, this field. But pedestrian access would have enabled residents to come from Macklands along these footpaths into Berengrave Nature Reserve or through the estate to Lower Raynham Road and then across Rain Lower Raynham Road to the public footpaths that are there or even closer towards uh, Lower Raynham Road. Members at the Planning Committee, when they approved this application, um, were not convinced by my argument on that um, and wanted us to go out to consultation with these residents as to whether they wanted a boundary here which had no pedestrian access or whether they saw a benefit in the pedestrian access. We did, uh, uh, Councillor Curry summed it up totally in terms of the amount of consultation we did, the amount of responses, and the responses that we received um, said that they didn't want to see a pedestrian, uh, a pedestrian access, hence Bellway have come up with this proposal. So the, the ask of members tonight is firstly, do you agree that there should be no pedestrian access? If you agree that, then the second question is, are you happy with the boundary treatment proposed um, in, in terms of that lack, of, um, how it deals with not having a pedestrian access? Right. Okay, do I have any other member? Councillor Hall. Thank, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm rather concerned about a bank, basically, because I think if the, 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 the restrictions you put in place are not going to be enough to stop people. <laughs> people will climb up a bank or they're going to climb down a bank. Yeah? So if, if access is required, they will make their own access on that bank. You know, not necessarily the older generation, but certainly the younger generation will, 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 will make use of that, that, that tool. So I don't believe a bank actually solves the problem. It, it, it isn't enough to stop pedestrian access um, so if we decide that we do want to restrict pedestrian access I don't believe this this scheme does enough because it will still happen so I think as, as the chair said we have to make two de or you, we have to make two decisions one do we want to restrict pedestrian access and if we do is this good enough Chairman, thank you very much. Um, and I know, sorry, I saw Councillor Lammas wanted to come in. My apologies to Councillor Lammas. I understand the point um, Councillor Hackwell is saying in terms of, yes, it, um, it, it will restrict the vast majority of people. Would a, a one metre deep swale uh, and a retaining wall deter a, um, a, a, a teenager who really wants to do it? Yeah, we've all been teenagers. We know it wouldn't have deterred us. Uh, we we, we uh, got through it. The alternative, um, should members wish to go down that route, should you agree no pedestrian access but want something uh, stronger? Um, I, I do not consider a solid wall to be the solution here. I think it's like having a Berlin Wall and it's separating those, 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 those two communities. Now, as I said, there's already boundary treatment along here. They've got people's side boundaries, rear boundaries through there. And then you've got garages through here. So we're only really talking about these two sections here so connecting there to here and then connecting uh, connecting through here so the alternative may be if like councillor hackwell members consider there needs to be something more maybe a, a 1.5 meter high post and rail fence would provide a, a, a further deterrent but still stop that berlin wall separation of communities Uh, thank you, Chair. I was just seeking clarity and advice over how to vote correctly to get what I want. So I, I, I want to approve the development, but I do not want any separation and I want pedestrian access. So does that mean I have to then vote against the first vote? I'd just like clarity. So if I want no Berlin Wall, I don't want restriction of access, I want the plan to come back with pedestrian access, could you please advise me precisely uh, how I'm to vote? Chairman. Madam Chairman, w would it help members when we come to it that I make two separate propositions? The first as to whether there should be access between the two areas. Only if approved would one then go on to the next resolution as to how we might, in commas, seal the access, close commas. My just seek the legal officer's advice. 
Chairman, I think um, my thoughts were exactly the same as Councillor Buckwell on that, that you do that first vote. Do you want to see pedestrian access or not? If you agree that there shouldn't be a pedestrian access, then as Councillor Buckwell says, you then move to the second vote, which is, do you want this scheme or do you want to see something uh, further? Okay, so. Thank, thank you, Madam Chairman. So on the, at least the first um, recommendation that I'll propose is that uh, we confirm and agree that there should not be pedestrian access between the two sites. Is that seconded? Is that seconded? Yes? Those in favour? That's five, Chairman. Those to the contrary. That's nine, Chairman. Okay. I have no second uh, proposal. No, I think what members are saying... Sorry, no, carry on. Um, members are saying that uh, you want to see a pedestrian access... Uh, that's, that's right, so you want to see a pedestrian access uh, here, so you're instructing, you're instructing officers to, to amend that scheme to get a pedestrian access. Does that need to be voted on? Well, I'm happy to clarify uh, or give members the opportunity to clarify that it is the wish of the committee that there be a pedestrian access and that officers are requested to pursue the options of design, etc., in that respect to achieve that. Can you put your microphone on? I'm sorry, just to clarify, that would be under delegated authorities, is what uh, Councillor Butler ha Happy to include that, yeah. Is that seconded? Thank you. Those in favour of that motion? That's 12, Chairman. Those to the contrary? Just one, Chairman. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on. We go to the garages at Barclay Mount, Old Road, Chatham. That's Carly. Port Victoria. Thank you, Chairman. Um, some members will remember this. Uh, it was a committee decision for an outline uh, planning application previously, and this is the application for reserve matters, uh, which is for appearance, scale, a slight um, change to the layout uh, which was previously approved um, but also includes discharge of conditions related to levels, archaeology, uh, construction environmental management plan and lighting. Uh, so this is the site here, it's in the Isle of Grain, so it's a village out on the peninsula, um, that's the site there. The outline planning permission was granted in December 2020 for five dwellings with parking, so therefore the principle's already been established and agreed. This is an aerial photo of the site. Um, so uh, you may remember there's a gun battery up here. So there were some issues around uh, keeping the fields of fire clear when we looked at the layout. Um, and this is an old scout hut here. Um, so this is the outline permission uh, that was previously approved. Um, so you can see the layout of the five dwellings there. So the end one slightly forward of the three in the middle. And then we move to the current proposal, which uh, sees uh, the dwellings uh, set back. And this is due to uh, a sewer and way leave running along the front. So that's why they've been pushed back there. There's the dotted lines. And just so you can see them side by side, 
the differences in terms of the layout is only slight um, and the parking areas uh, retained to the front as is the ecological areas that were secured uh, under the outline planning permission. Um, in terms of just, the, just to point out on this planks, it's easier, the garden depths, um, there, there is some uh, loss of garden depth there, but uh, all in all, it still meets the uh, standards, uh, the Medway design standards. So these are the design of the houses, the one, to th uh, one uh, and three. Um, and they are generally in keeping with the area. The area is quite mixed in that part of the village. And then we have houses two, four, and five, uh, which are a handed version of, of the ones you've just seen. All of the properties are four bed houses and all meet the internal standards. And this is how it would look in the street scene, albeit black and white. Um, one of the conditions is for um, site levels, the finished floor levels, so they, that's included there. And the reason for that was to do with visual amenity. Um, when you're looking at the finished floor levels and the overall heights of the building, um, you're looking at 4.8 metres to 8.5 metres eaves to ridge overall. Um, and in, in terms of the visual uh, amenity and how it sits within the locality, no objections raised uh, from officers. There are also conditions around um, the SEMP and the bat sensitive lighting that's also been uh, sought to discharge. Again, there's no uh, issues with regard to the discharge of those from officers point of view. In relation to archeology span though, um, there is uh, agreement in terms of the buried archeology, span um, but there's some further work that needs to be done that has been requested um, and I believe we're waiting for KCC to come back on that. So we would be asking for delegated authority to uh, deal with the discharge of that condition subject to um, KCC's response uh, on that. Um, and all in all, we are recommending approval um, as set out in the report. Thank you. Any member? No, Vice Chairman. Thank you, Madam Chairman, and I thank Carly for her introduction and report. Uh, as Carly said, members have dealt with this uh, fairly recently, back end of last year. So we've established the principle. We're, we're coming back to uh, look at the discharge uh, of requirements. And in that respect, I would uh, move that we approve subject to conditions one and two and include the delegated authority for officers to deal with the archaeological issues to which Carly referred in her report with KCC. So on that basis, Madam Chairman, I welcome this new development. Grain um, has only had, with the two that are being completed, seven new properties in the last goodness knows how many years and sometimes villages need at least a little development so uh, I very much welcome this. This site has been an ongoing consideration for a long time. Uh, as the parish council say they're technically correct this is really land at Chapel Road and Port Victoria but that's a detail uh, for officers to sort out on the addresses in due course. But on that basis I move the recommendation. Seconded. Thank you. Those in favour? That's 15, Chairman. The application for Port Victoria is approved. We now go to the garages at Barclay Mount. Thank you, Chairman. Members will also be familiar with this one. Um, I've got all the repeats tonight. Uh, oh no, yeah, Trafalgar Centre, so. Um, yeah, so this one was uh, previously refused and it was for four flats that time. So it is an outline planning application. Um, it comes in as an outline planning application with all matters reserved again for the demolition of garages and the construction of a block of three flats, which would be one two bed and two one bed. So this is the site here in Chatham. Um, so you've got the, the, the pizza place here, the office building there, and New Road Conservation Area running along there. Um, it's an urban area, predominantly residential, but there are some other uses, as just mentioned. Um, in terms of the principle, because of the, the uses, we've got no objection to that. Um, the previous refusal related to overdevelopment of the site. 
so this just gives uh, an aerial view of the uh, garages that are currently on the site. Um, and then some photographs looking along the road. So old road here, uh, hazel views, a block of flats there. This is the site here. And then this is the access up to Upper Mount, um, which again, members will be familiar with. There's a current uh, live application um, for development on, on this upper level. Um, it's for 19 flats uh, with, with parking. It's currently under uh, consideration into, and it's currently being amended and we're yet to receive those amended plans, I believe. Um, so this is just looking back down that access to the upper mount and back towards the site. And there was a request for um, a, a crash barrier along this boundary uh, for vehicles entering the site. And that's either as a car park or um, if it's developed uh, further with the residential um, proposal as we've currently got. And this is just to show the, the backs of the uh, closest properties in New Road to the site in terms of um, potential impact uh, on amenity issues. Um, so the, you've got the ground floor one here is obstructed by stairs um, and then up here, um, first floor amenity uh, area for uh, old um, fronting Old Road from uh, the rear of 62. And then here we've got the rear of 66 and 68 New Road. Um, and this is the previous uh, indicative floor plan. So we've both plan uh, planning applications, they're both in outline with all matters reserved. But what we've got is uh, plans that have submi submitted for both of the schemes to demonstrate how the building could be achieved, it, one way it could be achieved on the site. Um, design is really important because of the proximity to the conservation area. Um, so this is the elevations that were previously shown um, for, for the previous scheme, for the four flat scheme. And then this is the uh, proposed indicative ground floor layout for the current scheme. So there's parking here. This is uh, a ground floor level. And um, just to point out as well, there is an existing uh, dropped curb uh, along the front here. So whilst access is reserved, um, what they've demonstrated is that that existing access that's currently there, the existing drop curb, could be used um, to facilitate vehicle parking. Um, and at that rate ratio, one per unit, um, we wouldn't have an objection as officers. Um, we've got indicative first and second floor plans uh, and the roof plan there. Um, Again, whilst it demonstrates one way it can be achieved, um, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be like that, but such a constrained site, it's more than likely going to be similar to this if it was to be approved. Um, and these all demonstrate that it does meet the national standards in terms of internal space. These are the indicative uh, elevations coming up. So this is the, the front elevation. You can see it's part three storey, part two storey with this odd roof shape here. So you'd have read in the report, we, we're not particularly supportive of this current design. Um, but what it does show to us as officers is that you could achieve something on the site. We would probably encourage more of a continuation of a parapet design, pretty much like this here, and, and perhaps windows that better reflect here rather than sort of dated circular windows. Um, so as officers, we're not fully supportive of this architectural treatment. Um, but recognise that it's one way that, that it could be achieved on the site. Um, so there's other indicative street scene drawings, so it shows the relationship with neighbouring flats and the rear elevation and then the side elevations. Um, and then finally, just uh, moving on to uh, how it relates to the properties in New Road. So the separation distances are such um, that we consider it acceptable that there wouldn't be any uh, loss of privacy. They have included some mitigation measures to address that, despite us thinking that that, that is acceptable as officers. Um, should they include those measures, they'd need to, in our opinion, need to look a little bit more innovatively in terms of incorporating that into the design. Um, but again, that's something for reserve matters, should it be approved. Um, and then moving on to the relationship with uh, the development on the upper level, 
but I have to stress this is under uh, uh, amendment. So the this is with the applicants to amend this proposal. So this is not uh, as it will come forward if it gets approved. We are expecting to see something different. We don't know what that will be as officers. So this is our site here, but it is important that we take account of uh, the fact that there is a current live application on there. Um, it's really difficult to see actually from these plans. It's so faint. There's a dotted line here that shows the um, height of, of the proposal against the, uh, the, the proposal for the upper mount. Um, we as officers believe that both schemes could be designed to accept, uh, sit acceptably together. So we are recommending approval uh, for this application. Um, I'll, I'll just leave it on that as, as one to talk about if you've got questions. Um, so yes, we're recommending approval subject to uh, the um, section 106 contributions and um, conditions set out as recommended in the report. Thank you. Thank you, Carly. Councillor Hubbard. Thank you. Thank you for the, the report and presentation. Um, I don't think I've changed my view about the site. It's, uh, this might be a slightly different application, but it's still a contrived um, proposal, trying to squeeze as much uh, as possible into a small space. Um, the reduction of a property, um, but the, it may, there may well be, but the uh, basic principles and problems um, of the site remain. So I, I can't give it my support. Councillor Curry. Yeah, thank you, Chair, um, and thank you for the report. Um, I, I, I'm agreeing with my colleague, Councillor Hubbard, on this one. I mean, the, looking at the drawings, I mean, it's difficult to get the feel of the place unless you actually walk up there and see how tight the corners are, how narrow it is up there, and how difficult it is to get in and out without any more development up there at the moment. Um, I'm reminded of, and also trying to squeeze a, a building onto a tiny site, uh, within my own ward on the corner of Castle Road, and Luton Road, people might have driven past that, that block of flats that's gone up in the last couple of years. And that is quite a nightmare. There's already been a serious accident around there already because the corner is so compromised where somebody was um, on their scooter on the pavement. But nevertheless, it was, a, it was an accident that shouldn't have, shouldn't have happened. And, and I, I've got a horrible feeling about this site. I think they're trying to squeeze too much into a very small <coughs> space. I know Southern Water have got concerns about the, the sewage and, and stuff as well. So like my colleague, I cannot be supporting this application. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Hackwell. Th thank you, Chair. Um, I tend to agree with my colleagues on the other, the, the other side that this is an overdevelopment of, uh, you know, essentially three garages. I also don't like the idea of the, even though the, the frosted window is very, very, for, for the current neighbours, very, very close to the proposal. If I lived in that flat or house or whatever it was and I suddenly got a building that close to my frosted window, I wouldn't be very happy. Um, I definitely think this is just overdevelopment of a very small site um, and I won't be supporting it tonight. Thank you. Councillor Tranter. Well, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm a bit, uh, on the borderline with this one because I understand and actually emotionally agree with all the comments that have been made, but uh, and it's certainly that they're very odd shaped rooms. But then again, the other part of me saying, well, but then if somebody didn't like it, they wouldn't buy it. So I wanted to understand um, what we mean by overdevelopment um, and whether there are grounds for refusal or not because overdevelopment would seem to imply there are too many properties on the space. Um, and I, I, I'm struggling to find a reason to turn this down. Um, and the last thing we want is to have vexatious kind of ruling just because we don't like something. I, I would really need to understand on what grounds we could turn it down. I'm not sure I can grasp any at the moment um, because if the floor areas are right, if the turning spaces are right, if there's enough parking and, and so on and so forth, the fact you don't like the look of something, um, you know, or you rather it wasn't there, is not really a reason in my view. So 
I'm just asking officers, are there any grounds realistically that we could put forward to decline this? Ch Ch Chairman, I think it's um, <clears throat> if members were minded to, to refuse it, it's, it's effectively looking, uh, you know, if you look at page 130, um, there, the, the reason for pre uh, the previous refusal, which I think Councillor Hubbard touched on, um, if, if, if you feel it's an overdevelopment, if you can feel, it, feel it's contrived, then you're, you're effectively saying that that reason for refusing the previous application has not been uh, over, overcome. And, and then, as Carly just whispered to me, yeah, if we go to appeal, it's 50 50. Councillor Adio. Thank you, Chair. I was just going to agree with uh, what my colleagues have been saying. Um, definitely, it is contrived. Um, just because um, they decided to reduce it by one property does not necessarily mean um, it's not overcrowded, it's not um, overwhelmed. Chatham, you know, it's quite difficult where we have, you know, overcrowding going on. Um, I think Councillor Corey talked about, you know, looting, what happened there, and we're still trying to manage um, that situation there. So really, I don't particularly think the, 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 um, the site is fit for purpose. We refused it the last time. And I don't think there has been any majorly Im uh, or any improvement since, you know, um, or they've taken into consideration what we had to say. And just by reducing one property doesn't mean that it's still not burdened, you know. So it's in my ward. I will not be supporting it tonight. Thank you. Carly, could you put up the, um, the one which actually shows the, the floor plans, indicative floor plans? That's the first, second, and... So there's, there's three bedrooms indicated there. There oh, should be a one bed oh, oh, this on is... the first and one bed on the second, yeah, okay. um, yeah, and then okay. uh, the two the two bed is yeah, over okay. the ground and first. Okay, but this is purely indicative, so the scheme that comes in could actually be quite different to this. We have no guarantee that people are going to get these size of rooms. There's nothing in it that ties the application yes okay in a moment um, in terms of the number of bedrooms it is because it's in the description so they can't just yes. change the description yes it being such a small site there's very little wiggle room to yeah. change anything around okay. um, internally I would say yeah. Um, but yeah that that's that but it isn't we aren't approving that thank you Carly particularly for using the term, it's such a small site, which I think is, <clears throat> from myself and some of other members, this site is too small to actually take the development which is being proposed here, even if it is in outline. I have Councillor Hawcroft Scott. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I totally agree. The overshadowing in the privacy I think, loss of privacy, and also detrimental, Councillor uh, Adioli uh, has commented on that, to the whole of the area, really. I, it would be a bit of a, a nightmare. Councillor Hubbard. Uh, so, um, just uh, looking at the reasons why we refused it last time, so apart from one small change, e.g. the number, um, I would say, by the virtue of the limited size of the site and its constraints of the development of free uh, flats would be considered an overdevelopment of the site, contrary to the paragraphs and then um, the various things that were on there, 126, 130, 195, 186, 202, 
of the National Planning and Policy Framework 2021 and Policies H4, BNE1, BNE2, BNE14 of the Midway Local Plan 2003, my favourite plan of all time. Okay. Are you moving now? Yeah, I move that. So basically, it's the same as the last time around, just replacing four one bedroom flats with three bedroom, uh, three flats. Is that seconded? Right. Those who support that motion. That's 15, Chairman. Thank you. <coughs> the application for <coughs> Barclay Mount is refused. <coughs> that takes us then to agenda item 10, net text industries at Who Marina. Mr. Harris. Chairman, thank you very much. Um, my apologies to members for, the f for having uh, taken it off a previous committee. I just wasn't satisfied with the application at that time. Um, so this is the application site. It is in within the Who Marina uh, employment area, but it's next to this, these mobile homes. Now they're not holiday homes, they are park homes. There's permanent accommodation. The building that previously was on here was, was burnt down in, 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 a, in a fire. The policy ED1 discourages um, B2 uses um, because of it, their potential because of their potential impact on residential amenity of of, of the properties here. The, the 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 previous propo proposal when it was coming before a committee before um, had two industrial buildings on here for B two use, not adverse to the principle of that. But the policy, ED1, which says about protecting the residential amenity here being paramount. Now, my concern with the previously was that we weren't dealing with um, appropriate conditions to, um, to set noise um, uh, limits. And also, we weren't dealing with the hours of use um, satisfactorily. The, the applicants were previously saying that they wanted to stay open till midnight. And I was not happy with that. So it, that's why I went for a defer, deferral. <clears throat> now the scheme coming forward is for these two units here, um, replacing that larger unit that was, that was on there. The main entrances to them will be this way, facing towards the industrial estate. That's good, because that means the building themselves will act as, as, as noise baffles to a degree. And then we have also this building that's, that's in here. The applicants have also moved them slightly away from the boundary to allow for some, uh, some landscaping uh, along that boundary. Car parking is proposed here and in here, three, uh, three spaces with a disabled space as well. <clears throat> in addition to that, the applicants are, are now proposing that, um, or are agreeable to condition um, four, which sets noise um, uh, uh, limits on the boundary. So if they, they have to demonstrate that they can meet that noise condition. And if they can't, then they have to take action to, to further reduce the noise to protect that residential amenity. In addition to that, the applicants um, have agreed to condition nine, which restricts the hours of use from 800 to 6 p.m. Mondays to Fridays, and nine till 5 p.m. on Saturdays, with no operation on Sundays and public holidays. And I'm again satisfied with that condition. And then in addition to that, the applicants have now provided further information regarding energy efficiency and climate change. Again, which I'm happy with, they hadn't been previously proposing that. That's covered by condition 12. And then that additional landscaping, uh, which, which is of an added benefit, and that's covered by condition 15. So members, um, with those, uh, those, those conditions, I'm now satisfied that this is an appropriate development within, uh, for employment development within this employment area, and I'm recommending it for approval. Thank you, Chairman. I don't have any members, so I'll move to the Vice Chairman. 
Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank uh, Mr. Harris for the presentation. Uh, another example uh, of where deferring consideration has uh, brought forward improvements to an application. Very significant, the timing uh, of the operations that will be permitted, very important for the residents down there. Um, Madam Chairman, colleagues, on that basis, I move the recommendation that is subject to conditions 1 to 15 and would ask that uh, representations from a local parish councillor concerning the use of local species for the new hedging be taken into account as well. So moved. Seconded. Thank you. Those in favour? That's 15, Chairman. Thank you. The application for Hu Marina is approved. That takes us to 2 Spencer Close, Prince's Park, Carly. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this application is for a first floor side, single storey rear uh, extension and dormer to the rear. Um, this is the application site in here. Um, it's a residential area in uh, Chatham. So in terms of the principle of householder development, it's acceptable. Detached property, single storey front um, and side extension element there. Um, there's the rear. These are the existing elevations. And then um, we've had two previous applications, one um, for a dormer on uh, the rear of the property. So that's under a, a lawful development certificate. So that's permitted householder development and then a first floor over uh, the existing garage and a single storey rear element to that. And so basically it's combining the two. So it, what they want to do is just extend that dormer over the roof of the uh, extension that was granted uh, as part of the planning um, application previously. That doesn't constitute permitted development because it's going over something that needs planning permission, so that's why it's here. Um, we have no objections uh, to the proposal. In terms of the dormer, we would, would say it is quite large. It's probably not ideal in terms of the design, but it is to the rear, um, and so we don't have any objections to it and in terms of the amenity for neighbouring residents there's no concerns uh, with that um, subject to this window here being um, conditioned to be obscure glaze because it serves an ensuite so we're recommending approval as set out thank you thank you Carly I don't have any member who has indicated so I'll move to the vice chairman Thank you, Madam Chairman. Colleagues, I move the recommendation that is of approval subject to conditions one to five. Thank you. So moved. Is that seconded? Thank you. Those in favour? That's 15, Chairman. Thank you. The application for Spencer Close is approved. That takes us to agenda item 12, which is the performance report. Mr. Harris. Chairman, thank you very much. <clears throat> Firstly, on, on, on this, um, number of applications submitted against uh, determined. You can see, looking at this quarter, that the number of applications that we've received for this quarter is down from previous years. Um, so 320 compared to 412 last year. Um, maybe that's a sign of the current economy. I'm hopeful um, that things will pick up in, in, in future quarters. Certainly there's a, an awful lot of work that my team are doing in terms of pre-app, and that's reflected in presentations that, that members are seeing as, uh, as well. And with that, uh, that, that, that pick-up... Um, that will help us with our with our income as as well. The downfall uh, the, the, does help us slightly in terms of maybe getting through a bit of a backlog, as you see, uh, as you as you see there, and possibly also helpful in that I've got a lot of vacancies um, at the, at the moment. Um, percentage of major applications determined against performance um, target is 60%. Officers dealt with 100% of major applications within the target time. Percentage of my, minor target 70%. Officers dealt with 90% of applications within time. And for others, target again 
officers dealt with 93% of others. And that's officers and, and, and members of this committee as well. Um, in terms of income, you can see that we've had, we did have a, a, a struggle uh, start through a, a, in April. Things are picking up through, through um, May and June. Um, but as I've said, I am confident, as I can be, that income will pick up because we're having lots of pre-application discussions for, over some significant schemes. And members are seeing that in the presentations. In terms of benchmarking, where we look at uh, the, the nationally the, uh, the, our performance, we are above the average for, uh, uh, for authorities around the country. Uh, plan, plan extension. And in terms of appeals, appeals still, uh, uh, still coming in. Um, in terms of decisions, um, members, you'll be aware that we've had some really good decisions come through the post in recent days, which I'm very, very pleased about. More about that in the next quarter. In terms of this quarter, there were eight appeal decisions, of which three were allowed and five, and five dismissed. Um, <clears throat> just the, the usual word of caution for members. Um, we are being scrutinised in terms of appeal decision. If more than 10% of, of the number of applications we determine are allowed on appeal, um, then we will be seen as non-performing and applicants will have the opportunity to apply direct to, to the planning inspectorate rather than apply to us. Fee then goes to the planning inspectorate. We still have to do the work. At the moment, our performance is only 0.7% of major applications are allowed on appeal and only 1.1% of non-major applications are allowed on appeal. So we're well below that, that, that target. A number of units under construction. This is this is good. It shows that things are still booming in Medway in terms of of, of construction, um, and hopefully we'll start to see that reflected in our um, our housing delivery test. We're still below our target, um, but we are. It's demonstrating to uh, uh, when we use this on appeals. We're demonstrating that we are not putting our head in the sand. We are looking at our regeneration of Medway. We are actively trying to tackle our five-year housing land supply and meet our housing need. And that is being shown on the number of units under, un, under construction. Those figures help us greatly on appeal for those ones um, that we, uh, um, uh, members of this committee, um, refuse. So this shows the number of units completed. And hopefully when we see 21, 22, we'll see that figure at around about 1,100. Now, the reason I say that is because the housing delivery test is based on the three years. So at the moment, that figure there is particularly dragging us down in terms of the housing delivery test. Once that goes, and we have an 1,100 here, over 1,000 there, 1,100 there, that should hopefully start to take us up to get us above the 75%. Now, the 75% is quite critical um, for us because that brings in the double presumption in favour of sustainable development. We haven't got a five-year housing land supply, so the presumption applies. If we fail or if we go below 75%, there is, that brings in that additional presumption in favour of sustainable development. So we need to get above that, that figure. Forsen team, very, very busy. Great to see Alison back um, uh, now. Members, you'll know that I was very concerned about that, that, that she, was, she, was, she was off. She's back. Um, and um, in, reinvigorated, I think, is, is, is the word, and doing brilliantly. Um, and as Councillor Tranter knows, we're dealing with um, some major enforcement cases and dealing with them very, very seriously and, 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 taking, and taking them forward. TPOs, still an issue there, uh, Councillor Hackwell. Um, haven't managed to fill the uh, the vacancy there in terms of the tree officer yet. The senior tree officer very s sadly had a bereavement um, uh, recently, so he's had to take some time off. The consultant we're using is not eating into the backlog like I wanted, and, and you're nodding and, and you, 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 you agree with me on that. Um, I need to get that post, uh, that vacancy filled and, and start to, to, to get into that backlog. And, uh, and so there's work still to be done uh, on that. I am working very closely with, uh, with North, though, uh, and maybe there's a solution there in terms of an amalgamation of, 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 of resources. Um, we, we will see on that. <coughs> Lead Local Flood Authority, that falls with, uh, within me. They do an awful lot of work, as you see there. Um, complaints and compliments. 
complaints first. Um, 12 complaints, um, only two of those have been escalated up to stage two, seven dismissed, one was p uh, partially upheld, um, four I've upheld, um, mostly in relation to delay responding to emails and phone calls, uh, and also, again, delay in determining tree, uh, tree application uh, matters. So I hope we hold our hands up to that. We are doing the best we can with the resources available. As I said, I am carrying a lot of vacancies uh, uh, at, at, the, at the moment. Some things I would like to say, though, ISO accreditation through that quarter, um, we got through that yet again with no non-conformity. So very, very pleased with that. Uh, and the, um, the inspector we had was desperately trying to find non-conformities, but couldn't. And I think he was a bit frustrated um, by that. But it shows that our processes and procedures there are in place. But not only that, the staff use those processes and processes and procedures and understand why they're there. And that helps with consistency. And then finally, Chairman, picking up the points that, that you say to me uh, every time I report on the uh, um, performance, we've received a lot of compliments. Members, if you look at page 177 over to 178, um, there's some really good comments there about my staff. One here, we recognise that planning authorities across the whole of England are suffering from resource issues. We definitely are. Um, but this doesn't appear to have impacted on the service we have received from Medway, which must come from commitment and teamwork, very much so. Um, many thanks for your help on this one. As always, a pleasure to work on schemes on, in Medway. On to the next one. Uh, someone who's going to continue to invest in Medway, thanks to the service they're getting from my, my team. Um, then I thank you for your intervention in forcing the fitting of obscure glass on the side windows. Uh, this has been a huge relief to us, and the difference it has made to our life is, is immeasurable. Much appreciated. So it shows the... Uh, um, we've made someone's living conditions that much better by the enforcement action we've taken. And then finally, very helpful and incredible responsive. Working in London boroughs, I'm not used to getting such prompt responses. Thank you. So, members, um, very pleased with, to, um, to report this performance to you. Thank you. Councillor Buckwell, Councillor Harrell, Councillor Curry. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you to... Dave for that report and I, I would simply like to say how impressive I hope we all find the performance stats which are, are set out in section 3.2 in the performance report from April to June and achieving each of those successes I'm sure is not easy and the point's been made which we all understand that with the recruitment vacancies as well, in effect, the performance targets are raised in a sense because of, of the staffing resource that uh, you, you need to be able to take these applications forward, etc. So I think, I hope I speak on behalf of everyone here in thanking planning and support officers for the work that they have done to achieve the exceptional figures which are set out in paragraph 3.2. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Councillor Hackwell. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I'd just like to say I was very impressed with the percentage of appeals that ours were 1% against the target of, or roughly 1% against the target, uh, maximum target of 10. So I think we're doing fantastically. I know we don't always get them right, uh, but we, we do try. Um, I can't let this go by without mentioning trees. <laughs> Um, I'm very concerned about the, the, the graphs that you show. I mean, the applications are still coming in and we're not dealing with them. Uh, you know, and, and you know, practically every tree in my ward has got a TPO on it. So you know, people can't clip the trees in their garden without going through a planning process, which is taking over six months in some cases to, to come back, which is a fairly simple tree, uh, to, to you know, regular maintenance of a tree, which I don't find acceptable. Um, Perhaps you ought to ask me in to take me through the process because I don't understand why we can only achieve five or ten, you know, in a month. In my mind, you know, it's two a day. Uh, go out and see the tree, make a report, and, <laughs> and, that, and that's it. So perhaps, perhaps if you could at some point invite me in and, and, and so we can just go through the process of what people actually do to, uh, to go through trees because I don't see your action plan actually working at the moment. Thank you. Councillor Curry. 
Yes, thank you, Chair. And uh, just reiterating the comments of Councillor Butwell and Councillor Hatwell in terms of how well the team is achieving, and um, it's just remarkable results that we're getting. Um, obviously, the concern is around the my concern here is around the vacant posts. I mean, I, you've got eight posts that are vacant, um, and obviously that has an impact on consultancy fees. So there's a cost. I mean, the, the figures are exceptional, and we're really pleased that we're performing so well. But there is a higher cost behind there somewhere, and, and, and I'd just be interested to know how we're, how we're going about addressing this, because it doesn't only, you know, obviously affect in terms of the council having to pay extra than they should for things like this, but also there's a stress on the staff who are clearly very busy all the time. Having said that, every time I email, I get a response within about a day. So I can't, can't fault you on, on your response time at all, which is brilliant. So in terms of just the cost in terms of consultancy fees and how recruitment is going is my question, really. But well done on the figures. Thank you. Chairman, thank you very much. And, and Simon, thank you for those, um, those comments and, 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 and really good questions. I was at... Um, Chief Planning Officers Conference uh, recently, and the um, the Deputy Chief Planner for uh, D Luck um, was, was was speaking, and at the end he went for question and answers, and without exception, every Chief Officer from the whole country that was there said their problem is in recruitment and resources. There are just not sufficient planners um, out there at the moment, or coming out of planning schools. His response worried me a little bit. He said it's a problem which has been building up over 15 years. Uh, and then he said it will take, it'll take about 15 years to resolve. Um, not, I wasn't obviously happy with that response. Um, we are we're trying to find other, 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 other solutions. We're, we're back out to advert again for, for planners. We've previously been reasonably successful in getting good graduates in and growing our own. We weren't successful last time we went out to advert. Um, we, Carly's exceptional in terms of developing our, our, our staff. So where we get planners in, we're really good at developing them, try, retaining them, a lot of them, and then getting them promoted up to, up to seniors when they're, when they're, good, in, uh, they're good enough. Um, but we have a, there is a, a serious nationwide problem on, 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 um, um, on staffing levels. Um, and you're quite right, Simon, in terms of what are the implications for that, um, and that we are using consultants more now for things. Um, what I try to do, though, is to use consultants for schemes which have pl planning performance agreements, and I can then charge the cost of those consultants to the planning performance agreement, so it, try and, it minimizes that financial burden on us. Um, looking at all sorts of ways to try and, uh, to, to, to try and address it, um, at the moment, the possibility of um, maybe going for more apprentices is, is, is something I'm looking at, um, but it's a it's a big national problem. Councillor Tranto. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a f very easy, quick comments. One is the number, presumably the number of applications received. They vary enormously from one application to another. Um, some will presumably take hours, some days, some weeks, some months. So. I didn't know there was a better way of understanding the amount of work coming in, but that's for you to think about, I suppose. Uh, I, I, I think it would be more helpful with, in terms of fees to see a cumulative rather than a month-by-month -month figure, because then you could see how one year is progressing compared to another. It's with the lines going up and down. Obviously, from they are going to vary for random reasons from one month to another. Uh, is that? And thirdly, I apologise that the people in my ward are so badly behaved that it's taken so much uh, enforcement resource, which I hope will <laughs> we'll get under control at some point soon. <laughs> I don't have anybody else <clears throat> who's indicated, but as Councillor Buckwell has said, I think that, that we all appreciate just how much goes into keeping this system going. Um, we know about the challenges and we are grateful for the fact that we meet all these targets. So I know you'll take that back. I move that the report be noted, Madam Chairman. Is that seconded? Is that agreed? Thank you. Then we go on to the appeals. Chairman, I'll try and keep this brief. There's, uh, uh, we don't report on all appeals. It's only those ones where members have overturned um, officer recommendation um, or they've been allowed. 
Um, two of them in this quarter relate to the Avenue Tennis Club at, at Glebe Road, which is a member over to, overturn in terms of residential uh, development. So it's a scheme of um, four three-bedroom houses and three four-bedroom houses, and then a, a small, slightly smaller scheme of three three-bedroom and three four-bedroom. So this is the site here, and these are the two schemes which were allowed an appeal. That's having won previous appeals on this site, and I know it is a site um, which gave this committee a lot of concern. Um, what I would say is that we put up an exceptionally good fight um, at the informal hearing. I thought we did well. I am grateful to Councillor Curry and, uh, and, uh, and some of the residents who assisted us in, in battling this at, at, at appeal. On this occasion, we, we lost. Um, we did review the decision to see if there was anything in it which would enable us to challenge it. Um, but the, the, while we don't like the decision, or the committee shouldn't like the decision because you, you refused uh, the application, there was nothing which uh, the, there's, the, the inspector had not made a, a Wednesday unreasonable decision. Um, nor had he failed to consider anything. So nowhere had he erred in law. So we, we don't like the decision on your behalf, but there's no, there's no reason to, to, to challenge it. And then in relation to um, 215 King George Road, this is an extension to the property here to the, to the side and the rear, which would re result in the removal of one of these trees. We were concerned on, on it in terms of the impact on, on one of those trees and the loss of it. Um, and the needing, needing to replace it, but obviously with a smaller species um, or a smaller tree initially, but also in terms of the hardening of the street scene. Um, so you can see the existing and proposed elevations there and just how you can see the boundary there and how hard it goes to that boundary. Spectre took the view that that hardness, that hardening of the boundary wasn't unacceptable um, and that the Although one tree would have to go, it would be replaced by two trees. They'd be small to start with, but they would grow, and he allowed the appeal. Disappointed, but... Thank you, Chairman. Did you want to go on to the costs or not? No. no. Would you like to move? Thank you, Madam Chairman. Conveying our thanks to all involved in uh, fighting these appeals or defending our decisions, uh, I would move that uh, the report be noted. Thank you. Seconded. Agreed. Thank you. I, item 14, uh, Madam Chairman, I move the exclusion of the press and public for the reasons set out in that report. Thank you. <laughs> 